Well, hello, Ross. Oh, my God. If it isn't the most fabulous human being I know in the entire world. Hello, Martin. Hello, my darling. How lovely to talk to you today. Now, are you are you in some sort of, are you in a closet? Are you back in the closet? <laughs> it, you know, it took me a long time to get out of the closet, and now I'm back in it today, unfortunately. But, hey. <laughs> I am. I'm actually unbelievably in the middle of shooting something at my house. There's about 300 men downstairs. So, oh my god, that's a dream come true. 300 men downstairs. That's just an average weekend for you, isn't it, dear? (laughs) (laughs) Terrible. So, so, so the only place I could find a little quiet was here in my shoe closet. It was as I look at him, and we can see each other here. I see you, but I I, I, about 900 pairs of Gucci and Louis Vuitton shoes behind you. This is the this is why you are the most fabulous person I know. And can I tell you something about you? Just by knowing you, I feel like I'm a little more fabulous. Just fabulous adjacent by knowing you. Uh, you, well, you have. You, you probably are then, darling. No, I don't think so. I really don't. You, you have like, I want to set, set the, 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 the tone of where we met, right? This, we met, it's like I took a, a, a UFO to a different planet is where I met you. Like, you know, remember Sesame Street, one of these things is not like the other. I was at this event filled with fabulous people at a, a Chris Kardashian Christmas party. And I'm seated next to Martin Lawrence Ballard, who is just the most fabulous human being on the face of the planet. And for some reason, Martin, we hit it off. I mean, Anka, I come from small town, and you are the designer to the stars. Why did we hit it off like we did? Because now you're one of my dearest friends. Because you were instantly fabulous and utterly delicious. (laughs) Delicious? I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) By the way, you look fabulous. Are you on a diet? Yes. we're We're always on some sort of diet, right? I have been so inspired by your journey. You know, watching you watching you lose this, whatever it is, 60 pounds or 70 pounds, whatever it is you've lost, yeah. it's unbelievable. <laughs> it inspired me so much. I mean, I remember you and I used to, you know, discuss being on a diet while we sat there and ate a lump of fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I will say the, be- the best part about free- being friends with Martin is that I get to go to your most gorgeous house in Palm Springs. And the original owner, am I crazy? Was the owner of your house in Palm Springs Hugh Hefner? Uh, actually, originally it was um, Roger Moore, who was one of the James Bonds, uh-huh. and then it, and then it was Hugh Hefner, and so, then you, yeah. <laughs> and then me. Hey, <laughs> the things that pool has seen, my God, oh, that pool had to have a good scrubbing before I got in it. <laughs> <laughs> but what I love is that I go to your house, which is uh, RuPaul once told me that your house in Palm Springs is the most fabulous house he's ever seen in his entire life. And it's true. And uh-huh. what I love about you, though, and it's why we get along is because as fabulous as you are, and we'll get into your celebrity clients and everything. But when I get to go to your house, and it's just us and um, your partner, Michael, and we sit around there and my husband, Wellington, I bring Dickie's Barbecue which is like this fast food Dickie's bar- like barbecue joint. We get like pulled pork, chicken, the biscuits, everything. And we just sit down and kick it like real people. And that's my favorite thing about you, Martin, is you exist in this fabulous, crazy world. And you also can kick it in the real world too. Yeah. You know, listen, life has got many facets to it. And each one of those facets is part of our own personalities. And for me, you know, it's, great fun to turn it on and go to the Oscars and tap dance with all the stars. But it's really fun to also sit at home and eat a big sloppy Joe with you. You know what I mean? (laughs) Oh my God. Oh my God. I I miss a sloppy Joe. I think I dated sloppy Joe for about three years. (laughs) Honey, we all did. (laughs) (laughs) But you know what? I am always scared to eat in your house because it is so fabulous. And I know that you have like amazing people come through there. You've been designing now, you've been, you know, in Architectural Digest, the like top tier designer for so many years. I love this story of how you got into design, though. It's you sort of fell into it, didn't you? Yeah. I mean, you know, this this whole thing really started when I was 12 years old. I was this sort of precocious child that that um, used my allowance to run around all the little junk shops and flea markets. And we had things in England called car boot sales where cars would pull up in the back of, in like a field and open their trunks and it'd be full of all their sort of old junk and you'd get there early in the morning with a torch and you'd go through it and find treasures and so I used to do this as a kid until I found all these things that that I loved and I convinced my dad to rent me a stall in Greenwich Market which was in the south of London 
on Saturdays and I would set up all my stuff and make it look pretty and, um, and sell it to unsuspecting tourists in the afternoon with a great story, of course. <laughs> and um, I did that from literally from the age of 12 till I was 16. And, you know, at the time I thought I was doing it just to sort of earn, you know, extra pocket money. But really what I was doing without me knowing was learning a trade. I was learning where things came from, you know, what periods they were, what a hallmark was. And most importantly, which has put me in the stead of today, is how to put two beautiful things next to each other and make them even more beautiful. And that was sort of a the whole thing. That's what I call a superpower. I, I really think everybody, I, whenever I interview anyone, I try to zone in on what that is. And when I was thinking about what your superpower is, it's the ability to make things more beautiful. You have that sort of innate gift, but it's crazy to me that at 12 years old, you had the drive to turn that gift into an enterprise. I mean, what is that? Is that just in you or was it your parents? Well, I, I don't even know where it came from. You know, my dad had been an opera singer and an actor early on in life. So, you know, there was this sort of theatrical thing going on in our household, but uh, I don't even know where it came from. My mom mm -hmm. says that when I was three years old, I used to sit around with a chalkboard and I'd be drawing like chalk houses and sort of putting little bits of furniture in. And then when I was five or six, I would be using, I remember cassette tapes. Yeah, I, cool. I mean, I'm, I'm too young, but I've heard of them. You've heard of them, yeah. I'd take the cassette <laughs> tape packets and open them up and take the little page out where you'd have the clear bit of plastic and I'd put them all together and make them into kind of a house. And I'd use all the doll's house furniture from my sister's doll houses and furnish these houses. So I'm telling you, this is some weird gene that was there all, all along. Yeah. And that's what I talk about with the superpower. It's like everybody has a thing that they can't help but do because it's just sort of your, your purpose. And you have that. And let's talk about how you went from making little houses and, and selling in a, a market in London to being the celebrity uh, interior designer. Can I just can I just throw out a name and can you confirm or deny that you have done their designs? I mean, do you design and tell? Uh, well, you know, now and again. <laughs> okay. Well, let's. What if I threw out the name uh, Christina Aguilera? Yes, yes, little Christina. Can I throw out the name Patty Labelle? Oh my God, Patty was one of my first. Love her dearly. <laughs> okay. What about uh, the Kardashians? I mean, all of them, right? Just about, yeah. I mean, I get so confused with all the K's, but Chris, Kylie, Kendall, Chloe, Courtney. Yep, been through the mix with them. Okay. And, love, and love them all, by the way. Ta Tommy Hilfiger? I love Tommy, yes. Uh, uh, in fact, Tommy's current house is in this month's Architectural Digest that I just finished for them. I think it's my fifth project with Tommy and Dee Hilfiger. Okay, so just just so my audience, the audience is like understanding. When I said that you're the real deal, I want uh, the realist of the real deals is 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 Martin Lawrence Bullard. And I want to talk about Cher. You did Cher's house. I did do Cher's house. I literally just got off the phone with Cher before we jumped jumped on this. Call yeah. her back right now and put it on speaker. <laughs> I said to Cher, Martin, I've, got to go. I've got to go. Ross is waiting for me. <laughs> I will end this interview right now if you don't call Cher back and just tell her Ross and I. What is Cher like? Tell me everything. I've never met her. I, 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 out of everyone, she's the one I've never met. Cher's amazing. She's the most amazing woman. I mean, she's really, she's really real, Cher. You know, she's, apart from that, she's been a star since she was 17 and a multi-hyphenate star. You know, everything from TV shows, obviously her music career to, to Oscar-winning movies. Um, but she's a very... She's an extraordinary woman. She's a real advocate. She's a, she's a, I mean, she, she saves elephants, for God's sake. She's an extraordinary person. And do you follow her on Twitter? If you don't follow Cher on Twitter, you're a, you're a damn fool. You're, you're dead. You're dead. <laughs> you're dead. <laughs> RIP. I'm sorry. She's everything on Twitter. And, and is she funny? So hilarious. And mm -hmm. she loves design. So for me, you know, having, I worked with her on her, amazing apartment in in uh, in LA which she told me that she wanted to live like the first wife of a maharaja and I said well why <laughs> what the first I think, who says yeah. that who's okay said, why why the first wife I was like why the first wife and she said oh she's still darling because that's the one that gets all the expensive things <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Do you know how outrageous that is to say? I want to live like the first wife of a Majoraha. But all the way also is now my new Twitter bio line. That's all that's all I that's how I want to live too. Exactly. Can I ask you a question? When you're dealing with celebrities who are just used to being told yes, 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 all the time, you're designing a space for them. Your name is going to be on this space. Have you ever encountered a celebrity who had terrible taste and you just had to like go along with it? Or do you find a way to guide them to your your version, to your yes? You know, yes. I mean, certainly I have had to work with a few people along the way that have had kind of interesting taste. Um, but part of the journey is to sort of help guide them towards something that was, you know, much more attractive. Des good design changes people's lives. It changes the way you live. It changes the way you feel. It changes the way you wake up in the morning. And that's something, it's a lesson that I've kind of been able to help people learn along the way. Um, how does I, it change yeah, you like that? How, how does it do it? I, I think your surroundings, when you're surrounded by beauty or, and beauty is in the eye of the beholder, by the way. But when you're surrounded by what you think is beautiful, it just makes you feel happy. It makes you feel good. You know, it's like walking into a room that's that, that's all disheveled or walking into a room that's all cleaned up and beautiful. The, the, the experience inside of you is, is two different emotions. And I think that you feel that same emotion when you walk into a beautiful room, into, into a well-designed, well-lit space. Um, and so I really think it changes people's lives. I think it changes the way that they live in the way that they feel about living. You know, years ago, I did a, a, a one of the TV shows I did in England. I did a makeover show. And I and I made over the house for this lady that was a policewoman that had been severely hurt in, in a riot. And she had three little kids. They were triplets. And they lived in a what's called a two up, two down house there. And what anyway, does that mean, two up, two down? Two rooms upstairs, two rooms downstairs. So okay. the three boys all slept in one room together. And Part of my makeover, she loved Michael Jackson. And so I, I, I gave her this sort of Michael Jackson makeover. And I created for her a banquette sofa that was all leather studded that looked like a Michael Jackson, you know, jacket mm -hmm. and a table. Anyway, cut to, we had the reveal. It was fabulous. A couple of months later, I received a letter from her and she said, I just want to thank you so much for changing my life. She said, because before you came along, my three kids would all sit in front of the television and eat their dinner. Uh, and now we all sit at the banquet and have family time together and eat meals at a table together. And the whole experience has changed the way we've re we've interacted and our life is better for it. You Isn't know, so interesting. So when yeah. you're designing, do you, because I do think about how fabulous things are and grand and, you know, you wallpaper the ceilings and you mix textures and patterns, but you do you really think about design in a functional way uh, as much as like a, a aesthetic way. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Especially yeah. now, you know, having, having gone through COVID where everybody was stuck at home, people realized they don't want, you know, Aunt Matilda's armchair anymore because it was an heirloom and it looks great. The bloody thing's uncomfortable. You know, now they want comfortable furniture that they can use or utilize that makes sense. Modern luxury is comfort. And that is the first rule in interior design. And whether I'm designing for Cher or whether I'm designing for, you know, Mrs. Smith around the corner, that is the number one rule in this game is to make mm. people feel comfortable, to make their homes feel inviting to make everybody that comes in feel like they can sit, lounge, make love on every piece of furniture in the house. Oh my God. Oh, not every piece of furniture. <laughs> I mean, but, uh, you know, like a coat rack's a little difficult. But I'll, I'll, I want to ask you this. You know, it sounds like very aspirational what we're talking about, you designing for celebrities and, and you have designed for, for real people too, which I love. But a lot of people listening here will never, ever, ever afford a designer. I've never hired a designer ever, you know? And so, how do we do it? How does how do normal people make spaces look beautiful and functional? And what advice would you give real life people out there if they want to do it on their own? What kind well, of risk should we be taking? In honesty, more than ever today, there is good design on every main street of America. Um, you know, with all of these stores like CB2, uh, Crate and Barrel, um, Pottery Barn. There are all these amazing stores that actually have such really good design that's put together. It is so easy to go in and, and formulate. Um, do you really? Do you go there, or do, do you, you go know, where like? You know, I do. I believe in the high low of everything. 
You know, it's like getting dressed. You know, you can wear jeans and a T-shirt from Gap, but you can put on, you can splurge and buy a belt from Gucci and suddenly you've got a styling outfit. So for me, you know, quite often we make custom sofas and things, but maybe I go to CB2 and buy a cute little side table or a great lamp. Style is not about a price tag. Style is about the way something makes you feel and the way it looks in the end picture. What's the last thing you saw when you walked in to someone's house? And like, is there something that comes to mind where you walk in and you go, oh, now that's impressive? Well, you know, art. I mean, art is always the, the, the biggest signature in a house, I think. It's the, it's the biggest window into somebody's personality. And um, to me, the art is always the one thing that stands out. You know, the worst thing that stands out in people's houses. Tell me everything. What is the, because that, that was my next question. What is the biggest mistake people make? It's lighting. Lighting is <laughs> really? everything. Yeah, lighting is everything. You know, do you mean the, a specific bulb or you want everything on a dimmer or how do you mean? Well, you know, I, I mean, I hate really bright bulbs and over, even if it's the most beautiful room, if it's over lit, it's going to lose ambiance. So the best designer trick, it costs you 20 bucks is a dimmer switch. Yeah. You know, oh you do, it's the number one thing. Number one thing. It changes the whole vibe of the room. You know, you could be in a room where everything's a bit sort of like tatty or grubby. You turn the lights down, you light a candle, you know, burn a bit of incense and suddenly you're in a you're in a sex den you know what i mean you oh, can you're in a sex it. den and everybody looks 10 to 18 years lo- younger don't you think i know i must turn the lights out in here immediately but yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> that closet's too bright for you um martin lawrence ballard martin lawrence ballard.com martin's on instagram at martin ballard uh you know our viewers our listeners knew that you were going to be here they have some questions for you so can i uh ask you it's our final five Yeah, please. Amazing. Okay. All right. From Jessica wants to know, oh, sort of what we were just talking about a second ago, but she knows, Jessica knows my favorite store that I go to at least three times a week. (laughs) I can't even believe I'm telling you this, Martin. But Jessica wants to know, have you ever been to Ross's favorite store, Home Goods? I have been to Home Goods. I have. I have. Home Goods is amazing, you know, because obviously they end up buying out stuff from designer stores that is left over or from a sale and they bring it to their shop and you, you can get items that could be hundreds of dollars for like 20 bucks. So it's you, you're not of- wrong. I, I love home goods. I go all the time, Martin. And there's one near me in Palm Springs near us. Cause we live near each other. Exactly. Would you come with me to home goods one day? Could I go with you? I would love to come with you to home goods. Can I tell you the best thing from home goods what? is Christmas wrapping paper. Oh, they have the best Christmas wrap. <laughs> you know, I just thought you're gonna hate this, but I did. I have a sunroom here uh, in New York, and we wanted to do it nautical theme. So I bought all these wicker baskets to go in, like the credenza. It's is, is a wicker basket tack, tacky. No, not at all. And wicker baskets look fabulous with ferns in. You can roll towels up. I mean, you know, there's many uses for a good wicker basket, my darling. Okay, good. I want to run everything by you. Do you, and this is not one of my list of final five questions, but here's a question I have. When people find out that you're a designer, you like, you know, when you're at a dinner party and you find out you're next to a dentist and you're like, oh God, don't look at my teeth. Oh, yeah. Do people do that when they're like, oh, you're a designer. Oh, you're never coming to my house because I never want you to see my house because it doesn't compare to what you do. Do you find that a lot? Yeah, totally, totally. And, and also that one of the craziest things is that sometimes I go to dinner parties and people know I'm going and, you know, they'll, they'll have about 15 pictures in their handbag of different sofas that they start pulling out to ask me which one I prefer. <laughs> <laughs> I've so done that to you before. I can't even, t- I totally have. All right, next question comes from John H. who says, what's the, the biggest design mistake that, that people make? Well, you said it was lighting, but besides lighting, what's something else they do? Is it just white walls? Oh. Or, I mean, what? Well, it's, it's huh? scale. It's scale. You know, it, it's it's not understanding the scale of a room because if you put too big of a sofa or too small of a chairs in a room, you off balance it. So it's really understanding the size of a sofa, the size of a pair of chairs or the scale of a dining table in a dining room. It's understanding scale and, and, and that changes the experience totally. If something's too big or too small, it can ruin a whole room. So You know, I saw on your Instagram, your Instagram recently, you were doing um, supermodel Winnie Harlow's house. Yes. And um, you actually, you had cut out like big crepe paper to be the size of a chair. Is that something you do in order to figure out yeah. scale? Yeah, it's so important. You know, literally, and it's a great tip for people at home. If they, let's say that you go to, I don't know, Crate and Barrel and you see a, a sofa you love 
and it only comes seven feet by 40 inches. The best way to, to look at that in your house is to do a brown paper cutout and lay it on the floor and see if it really works. Can you get around it? Is there enough space? Is it too big? Is it too small? It is the perfect way to do it because you feel the you feel the mass within the space. Looking at it on plan or doing it just with tape measures sometimes doesn't work. So even us, the big boys, you know, the ones that get paid the big bucks, we still sit there with uh, scissors and some paper and cut out furniture shapes. That's a great tip. Hey, Heather wants to know, uh, when, when people ask you if you like their style, do you tell them the truth? <laughs> or do you just say like, yeah, it's cute? You know, uh, you know me pretty well. I'm a pretty straight shooter. So normally I will, if I don't like something, I'll normally say, well, it's interesting. Or maybe you can tweak it slightly. <laughs> yeah. or, you know, I like to be as honest as I can with people. Obviously, nobody wants to hurt anybody's feelings in life. But if you're hiring me, by the way, you're going to get the straight shot. I'm going to say, chuck that bloody ugly chair out. It's hideous. But if you were just asking me off the street, I might say, yes, it's interesting. Yeah, I think yeah, I think you've told me that before. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Give it to me hard, Martin. I can take it. Hey, Rebecca wants to know, have you ever, oh, this is something else I've done. These my, The listeners really do know me. Rebecca says, have you ever pulled a Ross and rearranged a hotel room because it was just set up wrong? Because I will do that in a hotel room. If that, if that should not be there, I'll move it. I have literally seen you do that on Instagram. It's hilarious. <laughs> um, <laughs> totally. So it just shouldn't be that way. You know, the, the the most important thing for me with a hotel room is light. I really need light. I can't stand a dark room. So if they if they check me into a room and it's dark, I have to be moved to a room where there's more light. By the way, I need to sleep in complete darkness. But, you know, in the day, I want beautiful light coming in the room. That's number one. Number two, I have to bring fragrance candles. I cannot stand a place that doesn't have a, have a smell that I love. So I always have at least two candles so I can get the smell going fast within the space. And that I have so funny. And, 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 you know, it, it's almost ridiculous, but it, you know what I mean? Like I want to laugh that you bring two candles to every hotel room. And then I think, well, no, that's the right way to do it. Of course, everyone should bring two candles. Yeah, absolutely. And then probably my biggest quirk is I like to bring at least one of my own pillows. Cause I really oh. am very particular about sleeping on sort of a feather pillow in a really nice soft, uh, you know, pillowcase. When, honey, so when you get pack into, your, and when you get into my age, pack, you need a soft pillowcase for your skin. <laughs> stop it right now. You look amazing. So when you pack, you put a, a, an extra pillow in there and bring it with you. Yeah. This is great. This is the life of the fabulous. I'm doing that from now on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I assume, and, do you buy, but do you buy my pillows from the my pillow guy? Is that your your go to pillow? No, no, I won't buy anything from him for Understood. various reasons. Understood. <laughs> um, and then. Final question, final question. And this is very interesting. Uh, Robert wants to know, uh, out of all your designs all, through all the years, have you ever re-looked at something and thought, oh, I was 100% wrong? Oh, my God. This very house that I'm in now, you know, I decorated this house 20 years ago for a TV host called Craig Kilborn. He used to have the late of show. Of course. Yeah. I designed this house for him 20 years ago. And then... Suddenly, and I always loved the house, and I always thought, oh, one day, hopefully I'll have a house like that. And so obviously, cut to, you know, a few years ago when I was able to buy this house when it came on the market, I walked in, and the entire house was exactly the way I'd done it 17 years beforehand. Same curtains, same furniture. It was so crazy. Craig had sold it twice. You know, it had been sold twice since he lived here, and everybody kept everything in here. And I walked in, and I was like, holy shit, this is hideous. I couldn't believe that I'd ever done that. <laughs> <laughs> and it was your design. Was that makes design. me feel better. Yeah, you know, because and it does make me feel better. And and you know, it what I love about design too is that like you can take a risk, but you can change everything. If you paint a wall, you can repaint it a different color. You know, nothing's yeah. permanent in design. Paint's amazing. A lot of people are scared of color. So a great tip is you know, think of a color that you look good in. If you think you look good in blue or if you look, think like you look good in green, imagine how good you're going to look in a room surrounded by that color. Mm. So that's a really good tip for, for, for choosing color. The other thing is start small. So start with, with a powder room. You know, if you want to paint something, if you want to get into color, paint your powder room, peacock blue or whatever the color is you love, to make sure you love that color really when you're surrounded by it. And that'll be a great introduction of how you pull color into the rest of the house. 
You know, I could listen to you talk forever about design. And I, I have to say, as good, uh, uh, of a, as amazing of a designer that you are, I, I just think you're an even better person. And that's not a bunch of BS. It's just, you know, I got to meet you and I was instantly intimidated by you because of how fabulous you are. And I quickly realized how real you are and how funny you are. And and you have been so kind to me for so many years, you know, just inviting me into your home, coming into my home, sitting around that fire pit with a bag full of Dickies and going to town <laughs> with no judgment. You've, you've just been the real deal for me. You know, I started this show. I wanted to interview people who I find fascinating. You are endlessly fascinating because you are the best at what you do. I'm oh, so grateful you, you stopped so by to see us today. Thank you so much, Martin. So lovely to be here with you. Thank you so much. Everybody follow Martin Ballard on Instagram at Martin Ballard and visit martinlawrenceballard.com. That's his website. Bye-bye, Martin. Bye, darling. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi. It's me, Ross. Thanks so much for watching. means a lot. Make sure you uh, like, comment, subscribe, and hang. Tell a friend. We're a lot of fun around here.